Oh, hey there. Welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. I don't know what's going on right now. I'm like going crazy. I have not slept properly in a long time. Oh, that just reminds me. I've got to take my medication. I promised you guys I was going to be back with more videos and more regular videos. And here I am. God, I'm brilliant. <laughs> For those of you that are new here, I am a late bloomer lesbian, a very late bloomer lesbian, because I didn't come out until I was 36 and I'm about to turn 40 now. What the hell? Before I came out, I very much fitted the description of what you would classify as boy crazy. I was always talking about a guy that I was crushing on or a guy that I was dating. And I talked a lot about how much I loved D. Side note, I'm going to be using D in place of the other word because your girl's got bills to pay and YouTube demonetizes me anytime I say anything about sex. It was honestly at the point that it was almost comical how often I went on about my love of the D. That to me was the most sus thing of all because straight women don't need to keep telling you that they definitely like men and they definitely like sleeping with men and they can't wait until their next opportunity to sleep with a man. Like sure, they might enjoy that and it might come up in girly chats, but they're not going to be constantly reminding you of it. It's kind of like when someone's telling a lie, you know, you can always tell. They will point out, I'm telling the truth. I'm not lying, just so you know, I'm telling the truth. People who tell the truth, as a general rule, don't need to say, I'm telling the truth, I'm not lying. That is someone who is sweating it out, being worried that they're going to get caught. And that's a little bit how it was with me. It was almost like I was trying to prove it to my friends as much as I was trying to prove it to myself that I just really loved men. And I can vividly remember a conversation I had with a friend where it was so obvious looking back now, it's so obvious, I can't believe I didn't stop and think like, hmm, Maybe, maybe I don't actually like men. So one day my friend goes, So, what's your preference? Do you prefer cut or uncut D? And I was like, what? I have no idea what you're talking about. She was like, you know, an uncut D is a D that has a foreskin and a D that's cut doesn't have a foreskin. So which do you prefer? And I was like, oh, foreskin. Foreskin, you say. Mm, mm. Um, do you know what? I... I don't know. I guess I've never really looked. And this friend was like, You love D. Of course you have looked. Just tell me what your preference is. But the truth is, I never really looked. Like, I went out of my way to avoid making eye contact with that thing. And I'd more or less be like, Okay, babe, I'm ready to go. So in the end, I literally just picked one. Like, out of thin air. I had no idea what was the correct answer. So I just literally picked one. While I was on one hand professing to absolutely love D and love getting it on with men, on the other hand, I had never actually spent any time looking at a D like I had actively tried to avoid looking at it. That should have, in hindsight, been a big sign. Like if you love something, you're probably going to want to look at it. Case in point, I love titties. I struggle not to look at them. If a girl has on a low cut top, I'm always one of those people who's like, don't look down. Don't look down. Don't look down. Mama! Even when I thought I was straight, I still used to look at titties all the time. I would always go to p that had big boobs in it. I would always notice boobs on the street. But D? Mm-mm. Mm, 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 mm. No, I did not want to look. And when I started unpacking COMPHET, which stands for Compulsory Heterosexuality, and I've spoken about it on this channel before, but just to give you a quick overview, it is basically a construct, a social construct, that dictates that heterosexuality is the default setting for women. So it is just assumed of women that we are sexually attracted to men. And then that message is more or less pushed on us constantly. Our parents literally read us stories about it growing up, about Cinderella about finding a prince charming. We watch rom-coms. People ask us if we have a boyfriend, if we have a husband, if we're even in the vicinity of a man. Sometimes people will just assume that's our boyfriend. And particularly if you don't look gay, which I hate even saying that because obviously there is no uniform for being gay, last time I checked anyway. But if you don't fit the stereotype of what a gay woman looks like, which is this idea of like a 
really butch woman who has like a shaved head or she has blue hair and lots of tattoos. I mean, right, she was a lesbian. And while that is a very valid way of being, and there are certainly lesbians who do look like that, there are also plenty of lesbians who look nothing like that. Lesbians who actually do appeal to the male gaze, who are much more in their feminine energy, who wear makeup, who have longer hair, who like wearing heels, and who might get attention from men, but they're attracted to women. We have a harder time understanding or even believing that as a society because we have been taught women need men to have value. And so if a woman is attracting men and men are like actively drawn to a woman, it is unconscionable to us as a culture that she still would have no interest in that, that she still wouldn't want that, that she would want to be with another woman. Because we also have this idea that lesbians are just quote unquote ugly women. And I'm putting that in quotation marks because even the ideas of ugly and beautiful are all socially defined bullshit. It's all bullshit. And also this idea that it's easier to go and be with a woman clearly comes from people who have not tried dating women. Because I can go on a dating app and I can find a man to go on a date with me like tonight. I could find a man to go on a date with me every night of the week if I wanted to and to do everything for me to organize the date, to pay for the date. And I know there's going to be people in the comment section that are going to be like, well, I wouldn't take you on a date. Don't be so full of yourself. Like, I don't think you're attractive. Great. Good for you. But please, we all know that straight men aren't particularly discerning about where you put your D. Like if you think you have a whiff of a chance of putting your D in a woman, mm, nine out of 10 times, you're not gonna turn that down. There has been urban legends about men actually sleeping with corpses and people at morgues preferring not to hire men for that reason. Like, because some of you will literally just put your D in a hole in the wall if you have the option. It's not what it looks like. But being a lesbian, you are going to need to be on every single dating app that was ever invented. And you are going to need to set your distance preferences to country wide because there are so few available lesbians. You will run out of lesbians, like within like a 20 or 30 minute period of scrolling. You will literally run out. You will be waiting for other women to come out of the closet. There's a joke about a conservative reverend who was extremely homophobic and suggested that all the lesbians should be rounded up and put in a cage. And basically lesbians being like, please take me to that cage, lock me up with the other lesbians. You can't just go on an app and get laid as a lesbian in the way that straight men can. That is just not a thing. Maybe you could get yourself a one night stand once a month, twice a month, if you're like absolutely cleaning up, but no way are you gonna get more than that. Finding an attractive, emotionally available single lesbian is like stumbling across a winning lottery ticket on the footpath. Finding an available D is like, I mean, you could just throw a stone and hit 10 of them now. But the problem with this heteronormative cultural assumption that lesbians are just women who can't get a man because men aren't attracted to them is that women who do attract men are assumed to want men. And so it's never really presented to us as an option that maybe we could not be with men. As insane as that sounds, it never occurred to me that it was a legitimate option that I could end up with a woman, that I could marry another woman. And this is despite the fact that I had attraction to women from a very young age. I can remember having crushes and fantasizing about women, but I always wrote that off as just a fantasy or a curiosity because I had never really seen any examples of women being together as life partners. The main examples I saw of gay women were very much objectified for like men's enjoyment. <laughs> And the couple of times that I was out with another woman and we kissed in public, I more or less had that message reinforced to me. There would always be a guy in the background that would like whistle or cheer or he would come up to us and tell us how hot that was. So gross, please don't ever do that to anyone. And so in my mind, I was like, wow, well maybe that's what this is. Maybe this is just some thing that I'm doing for men. While I can look back now and be like, oh my God, there were so many 
clear signs. I didn't pay any real attention to those things at the time. And one of my friends who's also a late bloomer lesbian who makes lots of queer content online, I discovered her via her podcast and reached out to her because when I was listening to her podcast, I was like, why haven't I heard anyone talk about this before? And she spoke about this experience of not thinking that it was ever an option for her to be with a woman. She was married to a man and she wasn't happy in the marriage and she had this yearning to be with a woman, but she just genuinely didn't realize that it was a path that she could take in life. And she now is getting married to a beautiful woman. And it's actually quite hilarious because she decided after she came out that she was gonna have a big old hoe phase. She was gonna go and she was gonna try out a whole variety of ladies. And and like a giant lesbian, she went on one date with a woman and proceeded to fall in love with that woman. And that woman is the woman that she is now marrying. And that really inspired me to start talking about all of these experiences more as well, because I realized that the only stories I heard were all binary stories. They just followed the same kind of very straightforward path, like people knew at a young age, and then they came out to friends and eventually to their family. I hadn't heard more messy, complicated stories like my own story or the one that Shoray told. I mean, I literally wrote a column, a sex column about being with men. And I took a lot of creative license in that column in order to be able to write the stories I did about being with men, but no one, no one knew that. As will come as absolutely no shock whatsoever to anyone who's followed me for any amount of time, my camera battery just died. So I'm gonna round it up there. But before I go, if you got any value whatsoever out of this video, please, please consider joining my Patreon. You can do it for less than the cost of shouting me one cup of coffee per month. And it helps me to actually keep doing this because YouTube does demonetize the living hell out of me. I don't get paid here and it's really hard for me to find brands that want to work with me because of the topics that I talk about. Your favorite creators, most of them, particularly smaller creators like myself, we just do it out of the love of it, out of the passion of it, out of wanting to spread awareness and education, not because we are making any kind of a lucrative living on this. And we do still have bills. So consider supporting some of your favorite small creators and consider supporting me. You also won't be just supporting me when you join my Patreon. You will get access to a huge content hub of all sorts of exclusive videos, audio content, basically stuff that I don't post anywhere else online because it's either too X-rated or too controversial to share here on YouTube or on my other socials or in my column. So you will get a ton of value. And whether you're in a position to join Patreon or not, thank you for being here. I love you all so much and I will see you in the next video. Mwah.